Hello, it's me, Mr. Bobble Morris, again, here to talk to you about the free exercise clause. And again, helping me today is Ms. Bobble RBG. Say hello. Hello. Now, I know you're busy, so we're going to get straight down to it. Kids, it'd be great if you had these materials with you. First, any copy of the Bill of Rights like this one that was given to you in class. Second, that packet of 23 Supreme Court case summaries that you've been provided, uh, the one that starts with Barron versus Baltimore. And then also, there's a one-page list of uh, several, at least, at least a couple dozen, freedom of religion Supreme Court cases that would be nice to have in front of you for the remainder of this video. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So, as we've seen, the so-called freedom of religion found in the First Amendment is more properly thought of as two separate freedoms. The previous video was about the Establishment Clause, which prevents the government from creating an established church, or favoring one religion over another. This video is about the Free Exercise Clause, which is meant to let individuals worship in freedom, free from government interference. The Free Exercise Clause, generally speaking, prevents the government from interfering in how people practice their religion, whether it's the act of worshiping itself, such as going to church or synagogue or mosque, or simpler acts like keeping kosher, wearing certain clothes, etc., etc. It's important to remember that uh, with the Free Exercise Clause, just as it was true with the Establishment Clause, uh, and pretty much any other rights we think we have, there are going to be exceptions to the Free Exercise Clause, meaning that some religious practices can be prohibited or punished by the government. Uh, generally speaking, what that means is that if uh, an activity or an action is considered to be a crime, uh, it, it can't be excused just by calling it uh, religious or part of someone's religion. And again, it might be helpful to have that one-page list of freedom of religion cases you've been provided um, in, in case it's helpful to refer to it as we go through the rest of this video. Um, there will be much, many fewer free exercise uh, cases that have come up because, uh, generally speaking, the government does a lot less restrictions in these, in these situations. Um, so there's only going to be a handful that you have to refer to. So it's not that important to have this list, but it might be helpful if you do. Okay, one of the first free exercise cases uh, on record is from 1897, uh, Reynolds versus the U.S. Uh, it was about polygamy. Polygamy, if you don't know, is the uh, practice of having multiple spouses, or usually it's put as mo having multiple wives. Uh, this was a common practice in the Mormon religion uh, a long time ago, and it uh, made its way into the uh, legal system a little over 100 years ago, and the Supreme Court said that uh, that is illegal. Um, basically, it was just too different from the surrounding Christian culture, uh, and it was just something that was seen as something that uh, could not be tolerated. Um, in 1905, uh, another uh, free exercise case came up, Jack Jacobson versus Massachusetts, it was about compulsory vaccination laws. Now, compulsory means required. And uh, like most states today, uh, I think pretty much everywhere, uh, you are required at an early age to be vaccinated against a variety of diseases. And in 1905, this case came up because uh, a, a practicers of a certain religion uh, found that to be against their religion and resisted uh, complying with the compulsory vaccination laws uh, in Massachusetts at the time. And uh, the Supreme Court uh, ruled that, uh, sorry, your religious views lose. And for this overall health and safety of the rest of society, uh, everyone has to abide by the compulsory vaccination laws. Now, the next two cases are pretty interesting. Um, the first one, um, uh, Minersville versus Gobitis, uh, the Supreme Court in 1940 said that it is okay. Uh, it, it was common practice in schools back then. Uh, everyone stood up in the morning and, and pledged allegiance to the flag and, and stood at attention. That's considered to be a salute to the flag. And uh, if students um, <clears throat> refused, uh, the Supreme Court said we could make them. We could punish them for not doing that. 
uh, only three years later in the Barnett case, uh, the Supreme Court completely changed its mind. And I don't know if being in the middle of World War II had anything to do with it, but uh, they decided that uh, basically um, freedom of, uh, of religious exercise meant that students did not have to uh, face the flag, stand at attention, salute the flag, recite the pledge, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you had a religious objection, you you didn't have to do that. Uh, it is very unusual for the Supreme Court to overrule itself ever. Uh, it's really, really unusual for the Supreme Court to overrule itself uh, only three years after its original ruling. So a couple of interesting cases for you. And the next case I'd like to bring to your attention is one that is required by the College Board. You must uh, know the details of this case. So if you don't study any other cases, make sure you study this one. Wisconsin versus Yoder from 1972. Um, the Yoder family were, uh, Amish people living in Wisconsin and, uh, because of the way they live their lives, the way their, their religious beliefs, um, affect the way they live. Uh, they felt that they did not need to send, uh, their children to school, uh, into high school, that eighth grade was enough and that any more than eighth, eighth grade was, was unnecessary. Uh, it was more important for them, for the children to come home and work on the farm or with the family in some way. Uh, they didn't need the extra education you get of, you know, in literature and math, et cetera, et cetera, in high school, uh, through the eighth grade was enough. And, uh, their religious objections caused them to, to, uh, to keep their kids at home. Uh, the state of Wisconsin said this was illegal, uh, but the Supreme Court, when they got a chance, they said, no, it's, uh, it would be unconstitutional to make them send their kids, uh, to school for so long if it's their religious beliefs that it's not necessary. So, uh, a, a victory for the free exercise clause here and a victory for the Amish people. The, uh, second case on this slide is, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, out of Oregon, um, now, it might help to know something about unemployment benefits. So in, uh, as far as I know, every, every state uh, provides you some sort of financial assistance if you lose your job through no fault of your own. So if you're laid off uh, just because, you know, you, you got fired, if you're just laid off, um, you know, the, the business goes under or there's a recession and they have to fire, um, lay off some workers temporarily. Um, that qualifies you for unemployment benefits, which means that the, the state starts sending you checks to replace part of your lost salary. However, if you lose your job for cause, if you're fired, you are generally speaking, not eligible for unemployment benefits. And this individual was fired for using drugs. Uh, he claimed it was during a religious ceremony and, but he was fired. So he was legally disqualified from getting unemployment benefits. And he sued, uh, claiming that that shouldn't matter because he was doing something religious. He was claiming protection by the, uh, free exercise clause. The, the Supreme court saw it differently and said that is a valid reason to be fired. And therefore it's also a valid reason to not get unemployment. So that last case was an example of uh, an issue that has come up uh, every once in a while in our history. Uh, ingesting legal subs illegal substances as part of a religious ceremony does not, generally speaking, excuse um, or justify uh, ingesting that illegal substance. So um, now there's an exception to this. Um, there are Native American tribes who, uh, as part of their religious worship, uh, ingest uh, something called peyote. It's a hallucinogen that comes from a cactus or something. Um, the Supreme Court has allowed that exception. On the other hand, um, Rastafarians who uh, claim that smoking marijuana is part of their religious practice, that is still considered to be illegal, uh, just like um, Ill, uh you know, marijuana in general is still technically illegal everywhere in the country. Um, animal cruelty. Uh, some religions uh, require uh, or permit animal sacrifice. Well, by our laws, that is cruelty to animals and is illegal. And the free exercise clause does not protect that kind of activity. Um, if your employer works, uh, requires you to work on a certain day of the holy day or, or a day of the week that is religious to you for some reason, uh, that would be illegal. The free exercise clause does protect you in general. 
um, at school or at work, uh, if you have a religious practice that you need to follow, you know, praying a certain number of times a day or, or something like that, dressing a certain way. Um, the free exercise clause, generally speaking, does protect you. Um, and schools and businesses can't fire you or punish you for, for not following their rules. Um, <clears throat> in general, governments cannot impose requirements that, that, that create some sort of undue or unnecessary burden, uh, for people trying to practice their religion. Um, so, um, basically is there are fewer exceptions to this than maybe the, the establishment clause, the free exercise clause, free exercise clause does do a pretty good job of, of protecting people, um, in their what, modes of worship and their ways of worship and, in, and in some of the deep details of how they live their lives according to their religious beliefs. So just to sum up, the Establishment Clause uh, is, is about uh, banning unnecessary entanglement between government and religion. Uh, the Free Exercise Clause is more about freedom of worship. Uh, generally speaking, you're pretty free to worship in whatever way you want to in this country, uh, unless your religious practices involve doing something that is otherwise considered to be illegal. And in that case, the Free Exercise uh, clause doesn't protect you. Uh, the one case in this entire issue that you must know, the Supreme Court case that you must know, according to the College Board, is Wisconsin versus Yoder. Please make sure you take steps to uh, understand that case in case you get a question about it. Bye bye. <laughs>